Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create an MEP project structure in OneNote. We're going to start by showing you a typical project structure or one that I prefer. Then we're going to go into a quick introduction of OneNote. We're going to create our project in OneNote and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. See you in a little bit. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. Okay, so I don't know where I'm gonna put this in the video, but I think it's important for you to get an idea what I'm trying to get away from, right? So let's say 10 years ago, I would have a project, it would have a project number, and then there's some information of that project that I want to record. So we have say general information, where you have your project name, project number, maybe your Revit version, what type of project, description, budget, square footage, etc. Then you would have another subheader for contacts, you know, like owner, all the consultants, the project architect. Let's say my general contractor was Bob the Builder and I would have his contact information readily available here, maybe his phone number, his email address, so I can contact him, right? But what I'm proposing here is that if, as you fill this up and as the project progresses, this gets to be a very, very long vertical distribution of information. So for example, right now, if I were to expand, even if you have them collapsible, like I do here by having different headers, right? Once you expand, like right now, you just see the headers and subheaders and it's still already pretty long. So imagine as you start, you know, jotting down all the pending action items, coordination, etc. This used to be huge. It could be easily hundreds of pages if you have a long enough project. And that's why we want to change to a more horizontal compartmentalized distribution of information. Okay, so let's dive into our project structure. Every project obviously is going to be different, but there are some similarities. So I'm going to share with you my typical project structure. Again, you tweak this depending on the specific needs of your project. So you're going to have a project number and that project's going to have some information. It can be general information, contacts, design approach or an overview of it. You'll have some codes and reference under which you're going to design your project. The schedule, you know, very important. You'll have certain expectations on your deliverables. So for example, schematic design, design development, 50% construction documents, etc. Uh, then you have some uh, coordination and some pending items. And I like to group them by discipline. So typically I do fire protection and plumbing. So I coordinate with all the disciplines. So obviously my architect. So I like to group them chronologically in this fashion. And this is not bulletproof, but it works for me. So you have some pending items where you know, you're requiring some information from this party. And once you get that information, it will become an action item for myself or my team. And then once we perform that action, it will become a coordinated item. So similar with civil, HVAC, electrical, and any other trades. Then you have some meetings. Nowadays, you have many meetings. So you can have your meeting schedule. So you meet every Tuesday at 3 p.m. You know, you write it down so you remember. Obviously, you'll have it in your Outlook as a recurring meeting. But, you know, it's good to have the information organized. Then you can keep your meeting notes or meeting minutes. I like to group them by date and description. So, for example, this one would be February 2nd. And I had a page flip for design development and so on. Then obviously you have your design. That, that design section is going to include all the disciplines that you're in charge of. So in my case it will be plumbing and fire protection. And then I have some general design stuff. So under plumbing, for example, you have your base of design or uh, some sort of summary of what you want to do. And then you have detailed calculations and design. So for example, you have your domestic booster, heat exchangers, medical gases, rainwater leader, plumbing fixtures, and you name it. Uh, and then, you know, you can have your equipment selection. You could probably merge these two. I like to keep them separate. Um, and then you have something similar for fire protection. So again, based on design and summary and some calculations and detailed design for your fire pump reaction, gaseous system, etc. Again, some general design stuff. Uh, and you can probably have some phases and demolition. Uh, or if it's a new project, then this doesn't apply. Again, this varies widely depending on which type of project you're designing. Uh, but you know, you're always going to have some construction administration where you can have RFIs, submittals, site visits, etc. And this RFIs, you don't necessarily have to have the RFIs attached to this page, uh, but you can have a link to a location in your server. Um, the idea is that you keep everything in a central hub and you can find your information quickly and efficiently. A couple of rules of thumb uh, think and plan before. You know, you want to take a look at this structure in your mind and make sure that it makes sense. You know, maybe you want to group 
these two together, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you want to have plumbing and fire protection together, or maybe you want to have your face and demo general information instead of under design. You want to have it under information. It's all up to you and how you feel comfortable. Uh, again, the main goal here is that you can find your information efficiently. Another good advice, it's always better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. What I mean by that is it's, it's better to have a placeholder here for faces and demo, and then if you don't need it, well, you don't use it. It's harder when you have to struggle later on to find a place for your information as opposed to thinking beforehand of the different needs that you may have and then you know you just fill your buckets accordingly and finally uh, no duplicate information you don't want to duplicate information ever because then you're doubling your work and you're gonna miss something so for example if you have a faces on demolition information under design you don't want to have it here under information because then you have to type it here and you have to type it here. If you receive an email and you want to attach it to this page, then you know you have to attach it to both of them. That doesn't make any sense. So make sure you don't repeat any information. Now let's jump into OneNote. All right, so if you have an Office 365 subscription or if you have the Microsoft Office suite, uh, you'll have OneNote installed in your computer. It comes in two different flavors, the app and the desktop program. They're pretty much the same thing. They're pretty similar. If you want to dive in a little bit more, you can probably go like to Kevin Stravert's channel or some Microsoft YouTube videos and you'll find complete courses in OneNote. But what I want to show you or what I want to focus on is how to utilize OneNote. If you're an MEP consulting engineer or some type of manager and you want to organize your project. But OneNote can be used for silly things like taking your own notes, uh, you know, personal notes or pending things or a shopping list or you name it. It's very useful. So the way you access it is either either you come here to your start menu or you can type here OneNote. And just as you start typing it, you can see it here at the top. So I can just click on it and it will open. If you're not signed in, it will ask you to sign in. You'll provide your Microsoft sign-in information and it will take you here or somewhere similar to this. So right now it's telling me that I don't have any open notebooks. So you could come here to file and either create a new file or open one like in any other Microsoft Office application. So let's go ahead and create a new one. It's asking me where I want to create it. By default it's in OneDrive. Uh, but let's say I want to do it in my PC. I'm going to give it a name. So let's call it Project 001. And I'm going to create my notebook. Now it's asking me here. Now you can browse and place it wherever you want. But I'm going to keep it in its default location. I think it makes sense. So it's Project 001. Create. And I like to pin the application to my taskbar. Typically I pin the application that I use more frequently. Um, so if we take a quick look here, you'll see that you have some tabs at the top. And then by clicking on them, you expand the ribbon, very similar to any other Microsoft Office application. And then the ribbon organizes into sub-panels, grouping similar tasks. You know, this looks very similar to Word. You can see the styles here for Heading 1 and Heading 2, etc. We'll probably get into that, but for now, I just want to show you that that's where you have all your tools. We could have also created another notebook just by clicking the drop-down list here and then add a notebook, and then it takes us to the same location. So let's say I want to have now Project 002. And notice that Windows is creating a folder. That's the way you see it in the Microsoft browser. So create. And now we have project 2. So we can change from project 2 to project 1, selecting it from here. Okay. One thing that I would like to mention is that this particular project we saved in our local computer. But most likely you'll want to be sharing this document or collaborating in this document with other people. So it may be better for you to create it in OneDrive. I'm just creating it here in my computer as a test to show you. And you may be thinking, well, so what's the big deal? What's the advantage of using something like OneNote? Why don't you just have it in like in a Word file or something or an Excel file? Well, if you think about our project structure, it's a lot more horizontal than it is vertical. So it's very impractical to navigate a document like this vertically. Or you may end up, you know, with a folder with a bunch of files. And it's annoying because you would have to double click in each one of them to open the file and close it. So instead of doing that, the idea is to have this as a central file in a OneNote. So how do we organize this structure into main headers and subheaders, etc.? Uh, well, OneNote has features that are called sections. And those sections are these tabs here. So for example, I'm going to define a section for each one of these green boxes. So I'm going to take this to my right monitor. And then I have info as the first one. Then you can click here on the plus sign and you create a new section. By default, you're in editing mode, so you can just type your name. So data, which is file location. Then we have pending and coordination. And then dash coordination. Then we'll have our meetings and we'll have our design section. And then you'll have your 
construction administration section and you can even create subsections under this section if i right click here i can create a new section group so how would that work well let's say under ca you want to have okay, we say rfis then you want to have submittals and you want to have site visit then instead of having this main ca section let me just delete it by right i can right click here and say new section group see and then that new section group could be called ca and then under that section group i could simply drag and drop the rfis the submittals and the site visit so you can see that they're all collapsed under ca so i can click on ca and find rfi submittals and site visit and if you find this content valuable there are many ways you can support it you can like the video you can leave a comment down there it really helps me out you can subscribe to the channel you can review it on google you can join our patreon community and support it directly you can give super thanks there's a button somewhere down there buy me coffee keeps me awake keep doing videos as simple as that you can spread the word with co-workers on social media and you can recommend my services so i can help them out i'm just going to get rid of my ca section just like i had it before then under ca i'm going to have my different pages and this is where my pages are located so right now it's asking me if i click up here i can give it a title so this can be rfis and then what you can do is you can right click here and then you can have a new page right you can add a new page right here and then give it a name let's say this is rfi1 rfi001 and then what you can do is you can take this guy and make it a sub page and then you'll make it as a subheader of the rfis so you're going to create another one you come here and then you say new page and then that would be rfi002 right and then what you do here is you're not going to type the rfi and the response here what you do is you can bring in the pdf and just attach it here or an email that's referring to rfi001 or who decided what for rfi number one so that's the idea just to have a placeholder for things in addition to rfis you can have your submittals right and then you can create a new page here and make it submittal let's say 22001 right and then this you would make a sub page just like we did before right click and then makes a page and here it is now let's go back to our info tab and here in our information tab we had uh, different pages we had general information so let's call this general information and here you know you can have for example project name let me expand this a little bit this would be bim it up one note project you can have a project number Actually, let's have project number before project name. So you can just cut and paste like in any other Microsoft application. Uh, you can add bullets to it. So I can go here to home and then you can make this, you know, like such. So the project number was 001. The project name uh, was a BIM it up one note project. Then you have a project location, right? And that's in, let's say that's in Miami, Florida. You can probably have like the owner. Let's say the owner is a uh, city of Miami and similar to this, right? Then we can add another page here and it can be for example our contacts our project contact so you can have let's say the owner right and then you have a certain contact number and a certain email and you can add tables you can get as fancy as you want you can even attach an excel file let's say you have a contact list for the project and there's an excel file somewhere you can you could attach it here and then just have like the two or three contacts that you contact the most here and obviously you will create your outlook groups uh, or your new forma groups or or your procore groups or whatever you're using this is just another tool that i'm showing you to keep things simple you can have your architect right and it would be let's say contact two and you know you, you could have the email address phone numbers etc and you have that information in outlook and obviously you don't want to duplicate too much because it it wastes time but it, it can be useful to have all the information readily available here for you just to see it visually it's nice and i'm going to show you an example at the end or maybe by this point i already showed it to you in the introduction and if you want to add your bullets you know you can come here boom